And hello, today I'm going to try and repair a Sony Walkman. This is a WM-EX512 from about 95-ish. Now the owner tells me that he's already replaced the drive belt in this and then he's found that it won't play. Now, of course, we don't know at this stage if there's something he's done to it or if it was like that anyway. Now this one's actually complete with its original bag and the uh, headphones and remote controls on there. This is great and this is really in nice cosmetic condition. Apart from not working, of course nice unit. I should also check that it's got a battery in it before we start. How do you get in? Oh there we go. Oh and it does. Be nice. It'd be prudent to check if this is actually <laughs> alive. And it's fine. But there does look to be signs of corrosion in here. Oh we've had a leaky battery. Uh, that's never a good sign. Well, let's see what it does. Fast forward. Uh, it's not moving the tape at all. Rewind. No. Well, the mechanisms aren't doing anything, so I'm not sure what's going on. Let's get it open. Well, to get in it, there's a few screws dotted around. <laughs> it's surrounded by them. Yeah, let's start with those. I might as well do the ones for the front cover as well. Not sure that comes off. Do you have to open it? Oh. <laughs> comes off like that. <laughs> Lovely. Not sure how this comes up. Maybe just lifts up quite nicely. There we go. Well, it's certainly full of nice surface mount goodness here. Yeah, this is the area I prefer. It's surface mount, it's very small, but it's not too small. Yeah. Let's see what it does. We did fast forward, which I think is this one. Well, there's nothing wrong with the belt. But there is indeed a lack of stuff going on. About rewind. Hmm, I don't think there's any action here. I mean, they are free to turn. Yeah. Yeah, strange. It all looks very clean as well. Don't see any problems from here. It's definitely getting power. I've got a suspicion there might be something wrong with the mechanism. And to see the mechanism properly, you've got to take this board out. And you have to unsolder all of the parts around here and here. Oh, it was quite a lot. Well, not to miss the uh, little flex cable there for the uh, tape head. I know it's full of tiny surface mount stuff, but at the risk of triggering some viewers, I'm sticking with the, uh, the soldering tool and the fairly chunky tip. And I do own quite a selection, but <laughs> I just got my favourites. Well, I'll unsolder the motor first. Where is it? <laughs> oh, there we are. get the power socket off I'm not sure if that's come off there let's just give that a little little twist Yeah, it has. Oh! <laughs> it didn't go far. Lucky. <laughs> and we've still got a few more screws. One there. And another one down here. I think this plastic frame needs to come off. <laughs> Which way does it come off? Hmm. 
there we go, there's the brains. Not loads of them. <laughs> but a closer look at the miniaturised mechanism. Pretty cool. I'm probably turning that backwards actually, probably goes that way. Maybe it goes both ways, who knows. There's a cam here which should be triggered into operation by this little solenoid. So I guess they normally pull, there's a spring pushing it back. I'd expect that to engage. Oh, go the other way. There's nothing going on there, that should be... That should be triggering this to operate. This is concerning. Is that stuck? Hmm. Maybe this mechanism's okay after all. I can't see anything broken, any plastic bits, and it seems to cycle okay. So, it's a bit of brown juice out of the battery, but I don't know if it's corrosion from water or what, but I don't think it's causing the trouble. I think we have to put the board back in on some uh, like extending wires. Let's tack some leads on. So the positive comes in over here, stick a red cable on there. Put a bit of solder on here to stick these wires onto. Let's <laughs> check I don't mix these up. And that's the third one. That's well, not quite the plan. And the final one. Let's turn it on. And no current. Hmm. I've got it, the DC power jack actually has a switch built in. So I just need to jump at these contacts here. Now we've got some power, let's see if it fast forwards, see what it does there. Same as it did before, rewind. Yeah, no real change. Not much going on, this solenoid, I don't see any movement. Oh, now I see movement. Oh, and it's engaging stuff. Oh, hmm. And to be fair, it's probably not going to be very happy playing because it's not getting any sensor signal from this. This is how it tells if it's actually driving the tape round or not. And there's a little optical sensor on this board, just there. And it just so happens those clever people at Sony provided a service mode for this, so you can test it in this way. To put it in service mode, you just solder these little pads together here. And here. And now I should be able to test it in fast forward. Yeah, this isn't good. I'm going to unsolder this before I break it off. Now it seems a critical part of this mechanism is this little lever here. This keeps track of whether the thing's playing in forwards or reverse direction. And this actuator controls this switch through here. It's got a centre. Uh, left and a right and I think you have to track this very carefully with the position of this that side 
that side. So now this is happily playing in the reverse direction, no, forward direction. So this take up reel is rolling there. That's fine. Okay, if I tell it to change direction, press play again. I'll move that with it. And now it's moving this one. So mechanically that's working. If I tell it to stop, it probably goes in the middle. No, nope, other way. Now it's in the middle. Okay. It seems to work. So what about fast forward? Now, here we are, we've got no motion here, all here. Yes, what's going wrong? Just sat in the middle. We'll check this switch is actually working right because it could be anything like. So what Although two pins in the middle are joined onto the track there. Okay, so if I flick that to that side. Yeah, we've got continuity there. And we have it here. I'll move it that way. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. I think this should go from the centre to fourth pin there. Yes, it's good. And that, that way centre pin to there. Yes, it's fine. I'm starting to think we've got a mechanical issue. Uh, maybe there's a clutch that's not working. I don't know. I'm going to get this gear cluster apart. I think there's trouble in here. How are we going to do this? This capstan's got to come off first. Uh, which has a little pretty cap on there. How do you get that off? I don't know. Do you just... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pull it off. <laughs> that's easy enough. Oh, and it's got those little infernal little plastic circlips. Yeah, don't watch this if you're squeamish. Yeah, these aren't the nicest things to get off. Not quite the factory tool. But now, we can get the capstan out of the way. Might have to take the belt off, mind you. And now I think this gear needs to come off to reveal anything. I just want to just slightly tease these up. There we go. So what's going on here? So that black gear, they're just taking off drives this, this rocks from one side to the other. I not quite engage anything, but I've noticed this, I haven't seen this do anything. It just rocks around. Hmm. That's a bit... Oh. Should that be stiff like that? That's quite stiff. And now I'm looking at all this wet gunk here. I wonder, is this just too tight? Should this be, should just be spring loaded? The spring here, that just should push that back up, like that, I think. <laughs> so if I can wash it, bit of alcohol on there, see if I can clean some of this mess out of it. Yeah, I'm thinking this should have some spring return, one way or another. Because it's just pushed by this when it goes back. It should, I think, surely that should be pulling itself back, should it? There's definitely something wrong here. I'm going to need the microscope on this very small stuff. I'm going to fetch this little gear off because it's in the way, really. I'm not sure how you get them off. Got little clips on it, so you just get some under it, I reckon. Oh, there you go. That's how it's done. Oh, and we have a horrible sludgy mess. What is all this? Yeah, we definitely had some battery acid eating competitions here. It doesn't appear to have stopped it moving too much. Why is this spring rattling round? Hang on. Hang on a moment. That's not engaged. That should sit like that. Uh, that seems to, it might have cured it. Has it? 
and that is pushing this up there. Ah. I'll pop that plastic gear back and the black one off there, line it up. There's definitely something about this, it has to remain in the lower position and I think this spring is what it's doing because if I look at that, that's the direction, this is adding the correct tension to hold this down. Now the spring could have gone weak I guess but yeah, I don't think we've exceeded its uh, elastic limit or whatever so I think springs ageing takes you know hundreds of years so I don't think so. I'm thinking this is purely this corrosion underneath. I think it's just too too tight. It doesn't feel that bad, but I'm a bit worried. I don't think I can get this off there. I don't know if that's metal or what, but I don't fancy popping that off. So we need to find a way of flushing this out. So we'll take these off again. And I'll pop this off again, don't break. There we go. I don't think there's anything else I can take off to get this off. Yeah, these, it's all, it's basically just riveted in. So I'm going to strip some more bits off, take the belt off, take this capstan off. And let me see now, let's get this this gear off. Oh well, that came up nicely. Then we've got another little circle here. There we go. I can lift this, oh no, get the spring out of the way. What else is there? I think that's cleared it up pretty much. Oh, that solenoid can come out. You can see all the sludge that's coming out from under here. I mean, it doesn't feel tight, but it clearly, actually, yeah, it is a bit bad. It's very gritty under there. I think that's the main problem. Does this come up? Yes, it does. Oh, crikey. Look at that. What I need to do is find some way of sort of like sliding some sort of paper under there and see if I can sort of push it out and wipe it. Yeah, there's a lot of brown muck hanging around here. I'll try a bit more alcohol cleaner in it just to see if I can flush more out. There's just not much uh, room to lift this at all. It's uh, it's pretty bad. I don't know whether to try and deform these little rivets so I can lift this off. It's a big risk. Very big risk that is. But I think I'm going to try it. I don't know if these are metal or... <laughs> I think they're metal. I don't think they're plastic. I think if I can get this little plastic gear off carefully without damaging it. Oh, there we go. I might be able to get this thing to detach. Which I have, excellent. So that's out of the way. It's still somewhat a little bit crunchy. So I need to get this off, really do. I wonder if I can just literally <laughs> bully this thing out.
Well, I've ended up getting pretty brutal with this. <laughs> I hope it goes back okay. But I've got all the corrosion from under there. Luckily, this, I don't know if it's stainless steel or whatever, this hasn't been corroded. It's just a casing of the cassette, the, the base plate that's corroded. But I think it's corroded like this underneath, that's been the problem. But I've pretty much scraped it all out and flushed it out. So I think I'm just going to push this back down and see if we can get it to sit flat again. Hopefully it don't snap. <laughs> God, that'd be a problem. Well, that didn't quite go to plan. If I ever needed an undo button in my life, it was <laughs> right then. <laughs> anyway. I spent a good few hours uh, trying to rescue that and um, I found in the end I actually um, crushed the rivet heads, squashed them all up so I could actually get the lever off the tape deck and that worked a lot better and I spent, I ain't kidding, hours straightening that lever, getting in the right position again. A real bad move I made there but it's all good now. So guys what you can see here, you can probably see all this sort of hammer rash on there, I've had to really beat this bar up. A uh, big effort it was. <laughs> if I ever do it again, I'm just going to squash these little pivots up there so it will lift out nicely. A lot easier to fix. Anyhow, it was corroded underneath and I've cleaned quite a bit of it all up um, and polished it. It's come out nice. So this is now working beautifully. So that's the fast forward or reverse, don't know which way round. There's reverse working great. And now if we just... But I found the problem with the play mode is actually a little bit interesting. If I just tease that solenoid, just to let it release there, so that should, and it is, operating into the next mode, so that's playing in reverse. If we do it again, cycle it like that, and that's now playing the other way, this is playing forwards. Then we get to, back to fast forward, there we are, it's fast forwarding. And this might have cycled correctly. See there, it wasn't quite ready. The issue is, this solenoid, this actuator arm, needs to stay flat down. And the thing that holds it flat down, I believe, is the PCB. It sits on top of there. I actually checked it with a piece of board here. It sits across this, sort of where the battery holder is. And um, it holds it down. Whenever I do that, the thing behaves perfectly. So. Just going to finish off here and put it back together. Before I put the battery holder in, I'm going to just touch up the uh, rusty parts. Just going to use this uh, sort of black mark pen. Quite good. It's quite a paint finish. Just going to paint this part here with the pen, and that should be it. Hello, what's that? <laughs> it's a piece of plastic hanging about. Get out. You can only see the middle section underneath the battery cover, so just make sure that's all even. This actually drier than matte finish anyway. Let's put the battery holder back on. Clips in there. And I can't test it with all these wires on, so they're going to have to come off now. These little test leads. So I need that PCB on just to prove it, or improvise something near it. And same with this PCB. Get all these off. Unsold these two tiny service little pads, and the other one is just here. Yeah, I just want to check the height of this thing here just to make sure I'm right about how it's set up. So that's 3.6 mil there, just relaxing it a bit. Compare that to over here, that's four millimeters. So we've got a 0.4 mil gap. A little bit of clearance. I'm going to stick something on there to just tighten it up a bit. I just cut this piece of plastic that's 
the right sort of size there and it lines up just next to the hole so that'd be easy to place on the PCB. I've just marked out this area so it just misses the coil of the solenoid and it just sits there I think. It's just off of the circuit board up. You have to go under there first, sort of slide so that way. Hopefully everything lines up. There's good. Let's pull that out of there. Get the screw in. And this one here. Try and put the battery springs in. Or whatever battery clip things, whatever they're called. Is that the right place? Yeah, I think so. And this one, the positive end of the battery, sits there. Let's solder these up. And where's the other bits? There's the power connections there. Right, moment of truth, put the battery in, see if it will fast forward, oh yes, Re rewind, happy with that, ok, stop, recycle the play button, lovely, perfect, let's try the other way. <laughs> Excellent. Fast forward. Yes. And finally some success. So I'm going to see if it actually plays. <laughs> God, I hope so. Let's get a test tape in this. Flip it over. Where's that play button? There it is. we go. Well it looks like it's working doesn't it? See if there's any sound coming out. And no. Why no? That's because he's playing the wrong side. <laughs> That'll be why. Well, I think that instability is probably the belt, to be honest, but it's a new one. <laughs> I'm going to start putting some of the covers on this because it's actually resting on the bench and it's probably not helping it uh, give us the most stable speed. <laughs> we won't go on with that cooking. <laughs> Where are the little bits, switches and that? Make sure they're lined up. So we'll have to stretch it over. At least that's how I'm fitting it. That looks good. Switches are engaged. Yes. Probably a good idea to take this battery out as well for start soldering things. Have this switch just sort of slid down there. Okay. Solder those little legs on. I haven't shorted those together by the way, they are already shorted. Thank you. <laughs> Whilst I'm in here it's probably rude not to give the heads a bit of a clean. Just the whole sort of 
tape transport just to get any muck off there. It looks very clean already to be honest. Yeah, there's no dirt on there at all. Rollers look fine. Very nice. Nice condition this is in. Oh, demagnetizer heads as well. Well, that seems to have sorted out the uh, uneven amplitude. That's something. A lot of frequencies. I'm going to measure it. Measure frequency. It's about 2.9 kilohertz. That's a little bit low. I don't think there's much more I can do inside here now in terms of adjustments, so uh, yeah, we'll stop this and uh, put a lid back on. Let's put these little switches back on, little fiddly things they are. And then on with the lid. Yeah, that seems good. Well, the final test. Hope it's the final test. She's been here too long. Well, that's working great. Where it's going, I think it's just the dead part of the tape. <laughs> forward in well as fast as it goes <laughs> yep yeah. this is good well that's working nicely let's keep it that way mistakes were made the first mistake leaving your batteries in these things they caused havoc as you've seen second mistake that yeah, was my mistake how i went about fixing that caused myself a lot of grief but there we go put this back in this little bag send it back catch you next time